folks hanging on the line. Let's talk just a minute again about the guarantee substitution. Uh, Ross, can you go back to that slide? Let's kind of walk through it again to help people understand that this is new for origination. It's common in servicing that when a borrower sells a business or someone leaves or whatever, that we substitute guarantors. But this is the first time we've had the opportunity for lenders in originating loans to consider uh, third parties that are not required to guarantee the loan to substitute for one of the required guarantors. And one of the questions that were in there is, you know, where's the consideration? Must be coming from a lawyer because I had this I had the same thought. You, you know, you can't have a one-sided agreement. There has to be consideration in any agreement like that. So that is part of what you need to consider as a lender, you know, that if you're going to have a different guarantor, do I replace my guarantor or do I just add it, which you guys have always had and have always exercised the opportunity to not only take the guarantee of someone required, but someone who has assets when that person doesn't. So you're familiar with the concept of having my borrower guarantee and then maybe having an additional guarantor. In this case, what we're allowing you to do is substitute that guarantee, but you can see here that there should be an agreement, some kind of transfer or liability agreement that should be submitted to you by the applicant as part of the loan package. So you need to collect that so that um, we can adequately and, and correctly identify the substitute guarantor. And of course, when Eddie comes and does his reviews or, or Paul Kerwin's team comes out, they're gonna look at these kind of instruments to see did it make sense? Um, we don't think this should be a free for all for everybody to charge and say, okay, I don't want to guarantee my loan, get somebody else, because why would anybody guarantee a loan for a third party unless there was some benefit for them? So when somebody offers a third party guarantor and they're not related, it's it's you know just common sense and good prudent lending to to dive that and make sure that you know it's a relationship that makes sense, that it makes sense to you and to your team at, at the lender, um, whether you're a bank or a non-bank lender, a uh, CA lender, that it makes sense to you in order to proceed. But it is, you know, there are circumstances, I think, as I discussed before, where you have parent and children, you know, trying to support and start new businesses where that does make sense. So hopefully that's a little more clarity on that. Ginger, do you have any comment to add? No, I do not. 